Nestled among low mountains, the city of Kyoto was built during the time when Japan was receiving the greatest influence of Chinese culture. And the checkerboard layout of the streets followed the Chinese idea of a number of large streets intersected at right angles by a series of broad avenues. Like many cities in Japan, Kyoto looks dull when you first see it. But the initial disappointment soon gives way to the discovery of one of the most fascinating of cities. And it is here that one can have the experience of really getting to know Japan. The rise of the cultural institutions, arts and sciences that the world regards as typically Japanese developed over the 1100 years that Kyoto was the country's capital, which was from the year 794 to 1868. Today, Kyoto is the fourth largest city in Japan, present population 1,300,000. But it's not its size which makes Kyoto important as a tourist landmark, but rather the fact that the past has survived and lives with the present. the center of the city, the 220-acre Imperial Park provides the setting for the former Imperial Palace, residence of the Emperor until a hundred years ago. Unlike some palaces, this one has no deep moats or high walls surrounding it, but is rather like a mansion on a large estate. Pavilions and gardens form a pleasing pattern of foliage and architecture, a serene combination of land and buildings. Emperors used to conduct the affairs of state in the ceremonial hall. Even though the seat of government was moved to Tokyo, the hall has nevertheless continued to be used for coronations. For this reason, the people of Kyoto, in their hearts, still consider their city as the capital. <coughs> Nearby Nijo Castle, with fortress-like outer walls and encircling moat, is a contrast to the simplicity of the imperial palace. The castle was originally built by a powerful feudal lord for use as his residence on his visits to Kyoto. <coughs> Looking from the spacious inner courtyard, it is apparent that the buildings here have been much more elaborately decorated. Nijo Castle is noted for the grandeur of its decorative wood carving and for its collection of paintings, a heritage from its glorious past. The Kyoto of today is a tourist attraction with numerous cultural treasures. A favorite with visitors is the Gold Pavilion. It provides an interesting glimpse of the life of the nobility in the 14th century. Of all the many historic buildings in Kyoto, the most outstanding architecturally is probably the Katsura Imperial Villa. This classic of Japanese architecture was built in the year 1590 for the use of an imperial prince. Enhanced by quiet, peaceful surroundings, it is a creation of pure Japanese beauty. The simple lines are considered very modern even today. Although using costly material, the builders revealed much hidden beauty from the bare surfaces of paper, bamboo, and wood, all of which have aged without deteriorating. The Japanese have a knack of making the garden part of the house.
In a typical Japanese landscape garden, elements of nature have been cleverly rearranged to achieve an artistic composition. The greatest single feature of Kyoto's beauty is its simplicity and austerity. The rock garden of the Ryoanji Temple is simplicity carried to a bold extreme. The severe abstract beauty expressed by carefully raked white gravel and a few rocks have much in common with modern art. This Japanese way of thinking, to consider simplicity as beauty, is the influence of Zen, a Buddhist sect. Buddhist temples have played an important role in the development of Kyoto. Toji Temple was one of the first to be built. Its five-storied pagoda, 182 feet high, is the tallest in Japan. Other buildings in the temple contain immense collections of ancient art. Less than a mile to the east is Tofukuji Temple, another impressive example of the energy and industriousness of the people who built the capital. This ancient Buddhist temple conveys a strength and durability oblivious to the passing of time. Kyoto, as a city, flourished hand in hand with Buddhism. Throughout the city, everywhere one goes, there are temples. This is the main temple of one of the most popular Buddhist sects, Jodo Shinshu. Its political power was so great that an otherwise arrow-straight streetcar line makes an unexpected detour in front of the temple entrance. <laughs> Pilgrims and devout Buddhists throng these temples throughout the year, but they are mostly old people. That was the signal for the start of another day of ascetic exercises of one of the Zen seminaries, which are similar in many ways to European monasteries. The Zen lead a solitary and contemplative life, and each believer must work out his own salvation by rigorous body and mental discipline. In performing meditations under strict Buddhist precepts, they cut themselves off from earthly desires, scrutinize their inner selves, and try to attain enlightenment. If during meditation an evil thought should come to mind, the monk of his own accord requests punishment. The life of Zen monks is very austere. To them, simplicity is a virtue, and this spirit has had a great influence on Kyoto's culture, and on all of Japan, for that matter.
Right next to the Zen temple is a university, one of many to be found in Kyoto. The tradition of learning is deep-rooted in the schools of this city, which is still a major center of education. Kyoto attracts the youth of Japan in their search for knowledge. It is a city that warmly welcomes students and treats its university professors with much respect. Students enjoy their lighter moments. However, they do take their studies very seriously. Kyoto universities are centers for physics, philosophy, and oriental studies. On a nearby hilltop is a university-owned astronomical observatory. New fields of learning and thought are being sought and pursued in Kyoto universities because contrary to its outward appearance of age, a progressive spirit exists in Kyoto. <laughs> 